Hey everybody, it's Brian here. Hope you're having a great day and we're gonna get right into it. I wanna welcome all the new saints. And I'm, I know you're subscribers, but I, I just hate that word. So I'm gonna call you saints because that's who you are. You're the saints of the most high God. You're gonna co-reign with Christ in the millennium. That's what you're gonna do, what I'm gonna do. And those of you who don't know the Lord in your heart, you might have just turned this channel on, asking yourself, who is this guy? When you find out, let me know. <laughs> I'd like to know too. <sighs> if you die today and you don't have Jesus in your heart, you will go straight to hell. Where is hell? Hell is in the earth, the physical earth, down in Sheol, called in the Old Testament. There, You will be in torment, gnashing of teeth, and you'll be isolated and worst of all you'll know where you are and you can't leave and you'll know that you lost your chance forever and ever you'll be in torment i'm painting a dark picture on purpose folks if i can uh, i'm not making this up it's in the scriptures you guys know it i'm saying this for those of you out there who don't know the lord in your heart this is not about religion this is about your soul being cast into hell in a, in, a, in, a, in a body that you suffer in. Not the body you were born in, but a different body. Just had a neighbor next to me in my apartment next to me died Saturday night. Hear a woman screaming. I mean, screams about 10 o'clock at night. Get out of bed. Run over there. The neighbors are out. He was in his 80s. He's an ex-Vietnam vet. He was pushing his walker out to his living room to get stuff off the couch to the face plant. Died before, probably before he hit the ground. CPR, did CPR and all that, and the medics came. He was gone. I knew he was gone as soon as I looked at him. I looked down at him. His name was John. That wasn't John anymore. That was a shell that held a soul. Now the soul's gone and it's lifeless. Only God knows his heart for sure, but I don't think he knew the Lord. We are close to the end, folks. It's getting down to the nitty gritty. This isn't about playing around with church anymore. This isn't about pretending to be a Christian because you're around other Christians and you just pretend. This isn't about ministering and going to church and doing all this stuff, but your heart's dead inside. This is life or death. This isn't life or death just physically. It's spiritual death. No more fun and games. The church has been doing it too long and playing around too long. If you die in your sin, you will go to hell. But thanks be to God, he sent Jesus Christ his son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You need to repent of your sins, Ask the Lord to come into your heart, into your life, to forgive you your sins. Believe he died, buried, and rose again on the third day. Your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And a lot of you guys already are. I see your comments, and it's so refreshing to, to see your comments. I wish we could talk back and forth physically and see each other, but it just doesn't work that way. And Because um, what a great conversations we would have. There's a, a beautiful family out there. This group that is growing is beautiful. We have people from all over the world. Uh, we have a new subscriber from Iraq, in the north of Iraq. I think it's the north. Australia, Wales, Ireland, uh, Texas, Colorado, just to name a few. I read your comments. Thank you for your comments. But we are at the end. No more playing games. There's not. There's no time left. Let's just say he say he doesn't come today. Let's say he comes by by the end of this year. What's that? What's this? Seven and a half months. If you knew you had seven and a half months to live, how would your life be different? How would your mental status be? Would the things that are getting you down get you down, or are you getting your 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 affairs in order? What's that? I don't mean making funeral plans. I don't mean making sure your family has money, which is a good idea. If something you die, you have life insurance. I get that. I get that. No. No. Mm -mm. Telling people about Jesus. 
I just can't talk to my relatives anymore. They just get angry. Let them get in, drag them into heaven screaming. <laughs> no, don't make me go. I don't want to go to heaven. You can't make me. And they're all the way to heaven because they get saved. I'm not saying to bring division to your family. I'm just telling you. The reason the attack is so hard is we're so close to the end. The enemy doesn't give a rip, excuse me, about any of us and wants to ravage our life, wants to destroy our reputation, wants to get us all involved with all this junk on the earth, addictions and relationships and all this drama, 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 because we're looking at all the drama over here and over here is what God's calling us to do, but we don't see it because we're over here. And I know a lot of you guys are not doing that, but I imagine there's uh, some and your life is just one big battle every day. And I am sorry. I am sorry that it's like that. I'm sorry that some of you guys, I read your comments, are really suffering. I am sorry it, it, what, what the world has done to you. But you and I are overcomers. The scripture says we are overcomers. And I'm going to read some scripture right now. And then we're going to get in some articles. <laughs> I got goosebumps. I don't know why. Oh, I, I feel him today. I had this all set up and now I don't. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Romans 8, 29 to 39. For those he for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. You guys hear what I'm reading? Ooh, of course you are. <laughs> Not deaf, hopefully not. And when shall and then, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? One minute, folks. First John 4, 4. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than who is in the world. 1 John 5, 5. Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. I was going to save this verse till the end, but I'm going to do it right now. Um, here we go. Come on. Who are the overcomers? You don't feel like an overcomer today. I didn't feel like an overcomer today. Feelings. Remember that song? <laughs> I can't sing. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that on camera. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't matter anymore. Be a fool for the Lord because he's coming back so soon. It just doesn't matter anymore, folks. It just doesn't matter. Man, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Just live for him the best you can every day and pray for opportunity and he'll give it to you. Here are the... <laughs> Here, Here's who the overcomers are. And they overcame, this is Revelation 12, 11, very, very powerful verse. And they overcame him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. Did they overcome him because they had the whole Bible memorized? They overcome because you've been in church for 50 years and you never missed a day at church. Overcome you because you're a pastor. 
Are you an overcomer because you're a deacon or an elder? Are you overcomer because you're a multimillionaire? No. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb. Who was the one in Revelation chapter uh, 5 that took the scroll out of him who sits on the throne? That was Jesus. As though a lamb had been slain, it says. The marks of his cru crucifixion were on him. We could, we're going to see that. He comes out, takes the scroll out of him who sits on the throne. You know what that scroll is? I said this in a few videos ago, so I'm repeating myself. Welcome to Brian's world. <laughs> those, da those darn voices are always getting in the way. <laughs> because God gave him the deed to the earth. He has the right to judge the earth. He holds all things together by the power of his word. Everything belongs to him. And God goes, here's the deed of the earth. Do what you got to do. And they overcame him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. Wow. I don't know how I'm going to segue out of this one, but... We're going to get into some articles and then I'm going to finish up in the same book. You're an overcomer today. I don't care where you are on this planet. I don't care what your status is. If you have the blood of Jesus, you've overcome. You may have problems coming out everywhere. You, your life might just be completely upside down. You can't even pray because you're so distraught. You just want to end your life, even though you're a believer, just to end the emotional pain. Let me remind you. You are an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. What did the Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego say in the last podcast? Yeah, you can kill us. Yep. But God can rescue us. But if he doesn't, so what? More power to you, and <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. They didn't give a rip. You know why? Because greater is God than greater is anything in this world. Do you realize once you were born in this earth, not born physically and then born again spiritually you're going to never not exist think about that one i keep saying that for these things but think about it. you're never not going to be you ever and there's a time coming those who have died god's going to send back those believers and get their bodies that were born in they're going to be raised with power and might and whatever killed them, they could have been nuked. They could have been blown up in World War II by a bomb. And the atoms are scattered everywhere. God's going to bring them all back together. Put them in their bodies and take us to heaven. That's what's about to happen. And we're always going to be with him. I don't care if you're 100 years old watching this video. Or you're you know, 20 years old or 80. It doesn't matter. You're going to be way longer in heaven than you're ever going to be on this earth. You know how familiar you are with earth? Uh, how long have you been in heaven? Oh, a couple million years. Yeah, I'm still I'm still finding new places to hike. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring it down. I haven't had coffee for a few hours. I don't know what's going on. You know, you guys want to bail on me. I, I get it. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> I just, I'm just trying to be real. I'm just saying what's on my heart. I'm trying to, I have to filter it a little bit because of my platform I'm on. But man, this thing, if I, would, I didn't have to filter it, I'd really let loose. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't. So here we go. Um, where was I? Brian, back to earth, Brian. <laughs> oh, yeah, now I remember. Okay. <laughs> We're going to start. I, uh, what time is it? I got a few minutes. Uh, let's see, folks. There's so much going on. Oh, my goodness, there's so much going on. It's, where does it start? Uh yeah, I, I want to, um, This I should have touched on this a, a couple of videos ago, but that whole, when the Iran attacked Israel, which they're going to retaliate, and Iran came out and said they were not going for Jerusalem or the mosque, or, or they were not going to target Jerusalem or the Temple Mount. You know what they did? They targeted Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. And you know why? And just my own humble opinion, they wanted to take out the Dome of the Rock, their sacred third holiest site. Because they blame it on Israel. It says right here in ynetnews.com. Watch Iranian drones, missiles intercepted over Jerusalem at, at Alas Mosque. Sirens were activated in Jerusalem as 
and as well overnight images of intercepts of the incoming missiles and drones were captured over the Temple Mount. They were blowing them up over the Temple Mount. They were trying to take their own mosque out. You don't hear that on Fox. This world is crazy. They are trying to take it out. Why? They want everyone to come against Israel. And you know what? The scripture says in the last days, every nation will come against Israel. It will happen. And it's sure going that way. Right now, they've, they've got some favor with a few nations. But that's waning and that's going to go away very soon. So next one is... Um, Let's see here. Come on, Brian. This is interesting. American Military News. Penn Scientist Startup will conduct the first FDA-approved test of a form of gene editing in infants. Can you say in the times of Noah? A company started by University of Pennsylvania scientist Jim Wilson has received FDA approval to test a form of gene editing in infants for the first time in the United States, the company said this week. They said it's for diseases that infants get. It goes down and talks about that. Come on, folks. It's just, re come on. They've already cloned a cow or a calf 30 years ago. I can't remember what it was. Dolly or something like that. You guys are probably remember that. They've got this down. And, and just so you know, you have these um, companies out there that take your DNA to find your ancestry. If you've already done it, you've done it. But I wouldn't do it anymore. But you know what? They probably already have your DNA anyway. Every time you go to the doctor, they take, you know, they take your blood. You think they're throwing that away? <laughs> it's all about control. It's all about, it's all about that stuff. And gene editing kids? You know, you watch the superhero movies like Captain America. You think that's fantasy? They have those people now. They're alive now. As in the days of Noah. What was in the days of Noah? Nephilim. Genesis chapter 6. Giants. Intelligent beings. Angels. The book of Enoch. Uh, if you've never read the book of Enoch, you should read it. It's really good information. It's not the Bible. It wasn't part of the canon, but it's, it really uh, ties a few things together. We, we've been lied to for so long about what's really going on in this world. It's been the, we've been in the matrix, like the movie, for a long time. They've been lying to us, programming us with movies, television, radio, busyness they just stuff we're in the end times we are definitely we're not just in the last days we're in the last minutes oh sorry uh, <laughs> I know why I'm laughing this is horrible but Hard, oh, hold on there. Pop up. Harbinger's Daily. World News Biblically Understood. <sighs> I'll just read this to see what you guys think. <laughs> Willing self-deception. Canadian doctors amputate healthy fingers of a young man with body dysphoria. I got to be careful with this one. I'll let you guys make your own minds up. In the first described case about digits, amputation, Canadian doctors surgically removed two healthy fingers from a young man experiencing body integrity dysphoria, BID. The sad, bizarre account published March 27th in an open access journal, Clinical Case Reports, is linked to surgical interventions for gender dysphoria. <laughs> uh, this similar yet distinct case underscores the dangers of gender ideology, ideology from a slightly different vantage point, one which circumvents the deceptive veil of civil 
rights language which conceals the harms of gender transition procedures. There's a lot there, but the guy cut his fingers off because he had a bad body image of himself. I got to read a little bit more because you, you got to listen to this. A 20-year-old man felt profound distress over his left hand's fourth and fifth fingers, according to the case report. He hit his fingers by keeping them flexed, which impaired his dexterity and caused localized pain. He experienced nightmares in which his fingers rotted or burned as well as daily intrusive thoughts, provoking a distressing feeling that they do not belong to him. He could imagine living with he couldn't imagine living with those fingers for years, the doctor wrote. And they tried medication to bring him down. Okay? It didn't work. So finally the doctor amputated his fingers. Okay, let's just cut through the chase. Um demons? Demonic? Mental issues caused from demons and demonic forces? Nightmares? This stuff's real, folks. You know, as a believer, a lot of us are going through it, but we're shielded from a lot, too. I think when we get to heaven, God's going to show us what we are actually protected from, spiritually and physically. Guy wants to cut his fingers off. Perfectly healthy 20 year old male. And it went into the whole thing at the end of the article about I, what the schools like to do and what's pushing I'm not going to go there I want to be around tomorrow to do another podcast <laughs> it's along the same lines is this world messed up or what you know I'm really glad there's a master plan and that God almighty is going to send his son back to fix this planet and to make it right. And that's about to happen. It's about to happen. Man has had 6,000 years or six days. A day is a thousand years and a thousand years is but a day to the Lord. It's been six days. We're, we're about to enter the seventh day of rest. It's almost here. I can't believe this stuff. Okay, we're gonna get into the. We're gonna we're gonna make things a little happier. <laughs> we're gonna get heat records shattered in northern Japan. This will make. <laughs> I'm laughing because if you don't laugh, what do you do? Cry and scream and pull your hair out? <laughs> what are you gonna do? This stuff. <laughs> oh. On Sunday, April 14th, several places in Hokkaido had uh, highs of over 77 degrees, marking the earliest occurrence for such temperatures in the island's recorded history. This is in northern Japan. It reached 79.5 degrees Fahrenheit, presenting a significant deviation above normal and surpassing even mild midsummer average temperatures. Read another article here. Think... Hold that thought, Brian. <laughs> okay. Something else weather-related. It's all tied in. It's all tied together. Several floods. Oh, this is the watchers. Um, watching the world evolve and transform. That's the website. Several floods leave 58 dead. Thousands of households affected in Tarzana. Tarzana. Excuse me. According to a government report issued on April 14, floods have affected more than 10,000 households and damages over 75,000 farms in the coastal Morongoro areas, approximately 124 miles west of Dar Salaam. I can't, I'm bad with this. And it goes on, at least 11 fatalities reported the coast region, and it goes on again. In addition, 1,529 people have been displaced, eight evacuations. And it goes on and on. And I'm going to read one more. I th hope I have this article. Um, come on, Brian. Uh, you know what? I don't think I downloaded it. Okay, what I'm, what, I, what I'm making my point here is that weather's changing. 
in the Mojave Desert here in the West Coast, the average rainfall is around, for the whole year, is two inches. They got one storm, one storm that dropped uh, almost four inches. So the whole year's rainfall in the Mojave Desert doubled in one storm for the year. Now they're having, they don't call it this, but they're having a super bloom out in the desert. Flowers are blooming everywhere in California. Why is that significant, Ryan? What are you talking about? Dubai. Dubai got a whole year's rainfall in three hours. They got five and a half inches. Well, what big deal? Five and a half inches. Their normal rainfall is two and a half inches. Or no, no, excuse me. The whole rainfall for the whole year is like four, four and a half inches. They got the whole year in one storm in one afternoon. You can go on and look at the videos. I wish I had the technology and the uh, desktop to show you. You can go on and look it up, and it shows the Dubai airport. It looks like a lake. I'm not exaggerating. It looks like the planes are floating on water, but they're taxiing down the runway. The water's got to be a couple of feet deep on the on the hole. It looks like a lake. It just, it just ravaged Dubai. Streets caved in. The wind, the wind was over 100 miles an hour, blowing stuff off these huge skyscrapers. Paul, you can see the videos. It's incredible. It's like the apocalypse. And it is like the apocalypse. I'm bringing this up because there's a binary system. I know. Let me go back. They're saying in Dubai this because of cloud seeding. They're saying that the government seeds clouds to have rain. There's been different reports that they only had one plane up in the sky that day to seed clouds for rain. But there's other reports, and that's not true. They didn't have anybody up in the sky. What they're trying to hide, I believe they're hiding this. What, you have double the rainfall, the whole season rainfall, double the season rainfall in the Mojave Desert in one afternoon. You have the same thing on Dubai. Same thing happened in Texas. Texas got 12 inches of rain in one day just a week ago. Uh, parts of Texas, or I think it was two days. What's happening? Binary system is changing our atmosphere. They know it's coming, and they're trying to prepare for it. Why, why do you think they have all the genetic food, you know, the, the, the MGO, and you know, all this engineered food and all this stuff? They're engineering food to be able to survive a harsh environment after this thing passes. Regular corn kernels from 30 years ago would not survive this new world after this thing passes because it's changing our weather it's changing our atmosphere it's changing everything hence the storms hence the solar flares hence the volcanoes there's over 2,000 volcanoes going off under our ocean as I speak they're not talking about it the Atlantic Ocean last year hit a record high over I think 104 degrees in certain spots they're making new categories for hurricanes. They have a category six now for a hurricane. Why would they do that? Because there's hurricanes coming. The sustained winds are going to be over 190 miles an hour. That's why. All this is happening because the rapture is about to happen. We are in the last days. We are about to get out of here. The world's falling apart physically, emotionally, spiritually. It's just going down the hill. But we're not, because we're overcomers. Jesus overcame the world, so now we overcome the world. We're not destined to hell, but we're destined for salvation. We're destined for heaven. Back to the rain, just because you might think, well, so the Mojave Desert got, just, say, just for numbers sake, it's round up. It got four inches of rain in one day, and its average is two for the whole year. That I, I lived in the North Pacific Northwest for 26, 27 years. Eugene, Oregon is in Central Oregon, University of Oregon. Our average rainfall there is around 42 to 44 inches. Imagine getting 88 inches of rain in one day. <laughs> Seattle's average rainfall, about 120 inches. Isn't that amazing? 10 feet of rain is our average rainfall. So they'd get 240 inches in a day. That's how 
significant, the weather patterns are changing. Dubai got five and a half inches and it devastated Dubai. These people with these really expensive cars, or, or they're, they're stuck in their cars and they're being flooded and they can't go anywhere, they're stuck. They've never seen this before. Why is this, ha it's happening all over the world. They're just kind of like, not putting it in the main news, but if you dig, you can find this stuff. But there's coming a time where it's gonna happen everywhere, we're gonna see it everywhere, and they can't hide it. <sighs> Jesus is coming back, really soon. Almost done, folks. Almost done. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to end with this passage. Revelation 22, starting at verse 10. And he said to me, Do not seal up the words of this prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the one who does wrong still do wrong, and the one who is filthy still be filthy, and the one who is righteous still practice righteousness, and the one who is holy still keep himself holy. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to render to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the immoral persons, the murderers and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices lying. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. Yeah. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes to take the water of life without cost. I testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy, of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. If anyone takes away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city, which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. Can't say it better than that. He's coming back, folks. Be in the Word. Driving down the freeway, you're mad. Good time to pray. Give him the anger. Give him the stuff. You're at home. You're frustrated. Nothing's going your way. One thing after another after another. Get on your knees and just give it to him. Keep fighting. Don't give up. I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray for your holy saints that are scattered out through all this world. I pray you'd fill them with your Holy Spirit of peace, Holy Spirit of joy. You would just put a hedge of protection around all of them that are out there. that are watching and listening to this. Uh, I pray you'd save people from the pits of hell. Hell is just around the corner and so is heaven. So God, save these ones you've called to your kingdom before the world was even made. You've already called them. Bring them in to glory with us. Uh, God, I just pray for the ones that are just um, downcast today. Raise them up in the heavenlies. Give them, go through all their emotions, bypass all that, Father, by the Holy Spirit. Give them a revelation of what's about to happen. A revelation of how close heaven is. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Fill them with joy. I pray against addictions, against worry, against depression. You have no place in a believer. In Jesus' name, be gone. I thank you for these ones, Lord, that you just are bringing to this, this family. You're making a family. And uh, a small family, part of a huge family called the church. I pray for all the brothers and sisters out there. You give them a great night. I pray they would sleep well, wake up with joy. Sorrow is at night, but joy comes in the morning. Praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen.
Wish I had more time. So much more. Saints, don't give up. You see these things happening. Israel starts to attack. It's just another sign. We're, just, we're almost out of here. This is Brian out. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you at the rapture. Okay, bye-bye, guys.